so do you think uh, do you think that has an impact on the fight if, if, if the Joshua fight does come come together in June? I mean, how, how much of a concern, I suppose, is it for you? Which I'm not that optimistic about of lately. Really? Um, he only fought in December. So December to June is only six months out of the ring. So he'll be a full year in front of me of activity. But I'm that much in front of him with skill. Then a year of inactivity doesn't really do that much. But, you know... <clears throat> You can never, you never beat being match fit and being active and out regular. Any fighter will tell you the same. If you're out regular and you're match fit, then you should be able to beat people who are inactive. Yeah. That's for sure. Well, but I don't make excuses. Look, I had three year out of the ring, come back and beat Deontay Wilder's ass. Yeah. So it's uh, and I'm, I sh I'm surely I can beat Anthony Joshua one hand tied behind my back, um, and even after being having sixteen months out of the ring. Years ago, if I would have had 16 months out of the ring, it, I'd have had an uphill battle to try and get back in the ring because I would have been 400 pounds again. But today, I live a different life. I'm a different person. I'm a proper professional athlete these days. Um, so I'm always ready. I'm ready to go today, tomorrow, next week, three months, yesterday, last month. I'm always ready to do the to distance if needed. I think the fans are ready for that too. I mean, you, you kind of dropping a bombshell on me here that uh, you're not optimistic that the fight's happening because it seems like all the reports are very positive. It seems like this fight was gearing towards June. How come you're not optimistic about the fight? I'm not optimistic. They've had all, they've had a full year to try and make this fight happen. Since the last Wilder fight, they were talking, even before the Wilder fight, they were talking about the fight potentially between me and Joshua. They've had a full year to make something happen. It's not happened as of yet. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is what it is. It's uh, nothing's happened. We're no further forward today than we was a year ago. Hmm. If the fight were to not happen, why? Why? Why would it not? Because it, it's the way COVID is at the moment. I don't think it's got much to do with the fighters. It's to do with a venue, a date, a place, site fees. It's to do with everything but the fighters themselves. Hmm. So. Well, it seems to me that um, the, the the climate or the the environment for that is is improving though, because uh, obviously you have the vaccines, you have uh, the COVID is, is trending in a better place, and you also have these uh, these different locations that that uh, you mentioned site fees that are willing to pay a lot of money to have an event, you know, like a heavyweight championship. Fight. Yeah. So 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 why do you? So I, I'm almost it's surprising for me to hear you say that because to me it seems like we are in a place going into this year and potentially this summer where you could have, you know, a site fee really pony up for a big fight like that. And then have, you know, if, if not a full capacity fans to have some fans in the arena, you're not, you're seeing it differently, huh? I'm just saying it different. I'm a realist. I mm -hmm. think if there was going to be an offer, there'd be one today, next mm -hmm. week or the week after it doesn't, you know, I'm not optimistic about it. One, I don't think Anthony Joshua wants to fight anyway because he knows he's going to lose and he likes the fact that he's a professional boxer. And after I get finished with him, he won't be anymore. So um, that's one of the reasons I'm not optimistic about it. And the other one is there's just the, the COVID at the moment. Even though you say we're in a better place, yes, we're in a better place than we was last year, but not still not in a great place. The full country in the UK is locked down tight still. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's not looking very optimistic from where I'm sitting. Now, and if there was so many offers on the table from abroad, foreign countries, then where are they? Mm. Why do I know about them? Mm. Mm. So what kind of outlook does that give you on 2021? I mean, is it you start to think about uh, opponents where, where it's not Anthony Joshua, so maybe the deal is easier to come back together? Like, what is your strategy? Yeah, listen, I'm not saying the fight, if the fight doesn't happen this summer, it's got to happen sooner or later. Mm. But top rank, um, I've got to give me two fights this year. So we'll see. I've, I will fight two times in ESPN. I don't care who it is. Um, yeah, I've um, I've got two fights coming up this year, regardless to whoever it is, Joshua or not. If it's not Joshua, we're looking to fight uh, mid middle of April, uh, early May, and then again at the end of the year. And if it is Joshua, then June, and then the end of the year again, bang bang, twice. Mm -hmm. So yeah, twenty twenty one's looking bright. Uh, all of this. All of this uh, stuff that if fights are going to happen, if they're not going to happen, it's not really my concern because whoever I'm fighting in, in the boxing ring, I get I get up for, I get ready for, and I go and destroy. And that's what I do. So, you know, it doesn't matter to me if his name's AJ, PJ, or CJ. 
he can still get an ass kicking. I'm not bothered. If um, in a perfect world, in a in in, in a non COVID world, if you guys, if, if you and AJ, the fight did come together, um, and I let's just in this scenario say there's going to be two fights, right? Two fights. Do you guys fight and then you fight again, depending regardless of what happens. Where do you think would be the best places to have them in your mind, ideally? Like, where would you like to walk out? Where would you like to face Anthony Joshua? To me, it doesn't matter. I'm a prize fighter, so I I, I go where the event is. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter if it's in England, America, New York, wherever. It can be Asia, it can be wherever it wants to be. It's a boxing ring to me. I just want the victory. I'm there for the win. That's it. Then I go home. And you said it can be anybody. I wonder if that anybody includes Deontay Wilder. And I know that you've already discussed this, but can you just put a bow on on the Deontay Wilder situation? Is is he still trying to get a trilogy with you? Is that still a possibility? Where where do you stand in terms of, of your chapter with Deontay Wilder? As I'm concerned, the chapter's done. I beat him twice. Mm-hmm. Absolutely smashed into pieces the second time. It wasn't even a contest. Um, they had a full year to make another fight. I agreed to about seven dates. Mm-hmm. None of them materialised. Then the contract expired, and now he's uh, now nothing. There's no fight between me and Deontay Wilder. But Deontay Wilder's got more on his brain than fighting, I tell you that. I think he's lost his marbles. I think Deontay Wilder is struggling mentally at the moment, physically and emotionally. You have sympathy? Not just me looking at him from the outside, from a person who's already been there and, and done what he's doing. Like, obviously, the, 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 the beating he took in the fight has really affected him yeah. because he obviously thought that he couldn't lose to anybody. Yeah. And then when he's been in there and, and been beaten like that, then it's obviously had a mental effect on him. Do you, do you have sympathy or are you disappointed with, I mean, you guys had two great fights, the two great yeah. fights that really, you know, that captured the attention of the boxing world, the sports world. And then uh, for him to kind of um, react to the loss in the manner in which he did, has it kind of soured the experience yeah. for you? Or is it spoiled, it's spoiled the way that I look at him as a man. Mm-hmm. Like to make a million excuses after a fight, after you've lost to somebody, it's, it's unsportsmanlike conduct. If he'd have beat me in the same manner or any manner, I'd have put my hand out, shook his hand and said, fair play. I've lost to a better man on the mic. Good luck and God bless you. And that's the difference in men. If somebody beats me, and I've been travelling the world for 13 years to find somebody to beat me, and I haven't found him yet. If there is somebody out there to beat me, I'll shake his hand. Because if he can beat me, he's a good boxer, he's a good man. Fair play. Good luck to him. God bless him. But Deontay Wilder clearly doesn't have that same mindset. And because he's lost, there's got to be X, Y, and Z reasons why he lost. And I believe it's mostly because he's got what I call a lot of ass kisses in his training camp. Everyone's afraid to upset him. So when they're all yes men, you can never get the truth. You can never fear, you can never get someone's honest opinion because they're too scared of losing the job or losing their status or whatever. So it is what it is with Wilder. He's absolutely disappointed me as a man. And I feel sorry for him. And I hope he comes back and, and fights again because I'd love to give him another hiding, a good hiding, an even better one than the first time. But I can't see him coming back. I think even if he does come back, I think he's finished because the bubble's been burst and people are not afraid of him anymore. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.